Uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, recent joint work uh, with Jacob Bernstein on topological properties of hypersurface of low entropy. And I will explain the uh, notion of entropy in this talk uh, next. So uh, <clears throat> the entropy in this talk is uh, referred to the one defined by coding Minikowski. So it is a given uh, by this formula here, which is uh, uh, the supremum uh, over the center x0 and t0. Sorry, the t0 should be positive here. So uh, of this Gaussian surface uh, area over sigma. So uh, my notation here is that, so this uh, curved Hn denotes the n-dimensional host of Mara on the European space. And in, in the case that sigma is a smooth hypersurface, so this is the uh, same as think about the uh, volume element on sigma. So in this talk, I going to focus on hypersurface in Euclidean space, but uh, it's not hard to extend this notion of entropy to uh, Submanifolds of Euclidean space of any co-dimension. And it's also possible to extend this notion of entropy to submanifolds in other curved spaces, such as uh, hyperbolic spaces. Uh, this is done by Jacob Brinstein, my collaborators, and also uh, uh, by my students, uh, uh, Yong Zhe Zhang. Okay. So the motivation to consider such notion of entropy uh, is uh, uh, the, in the study of a mean curvature flow. So uh, one parameter family of hypersurface in UK space, so it's called a mean curvature flow if it satisfies this uh, parabolic uh, uh, differential equation. So here, so the superscript uh, perp means taking projection of this vector, velocity vector, to uh, the union normal of this uh, evolving hypersurface sigma t. And H sub sigma t denotes the mean curvature vector of sigma t. So I think for this talk, so we don't need to uh, worry about the precise definition of a mean curvature vector because we're not going to use that. So one typical example, uh, is that you can think about uh, uh, around the sphere. So in the uh, Euclidean space, so whose mean curvature it is given by a vector that pointing towards the center of the sphere with a magnitude equal to n divided by the radius of the sphere. So it's going to uh, self similarly shrinking under the flow to its center in a finite time. So next, I would like to discuss some basic properties of entropy, and in, in particular, the, you know, in connection with uh, uh, mean curvature flow. So first, let's observe that because the definition involves this uh, supremal sign, so, so this makes the entropy become uh, translation and uh, dilation invariant. So that's basically the meaning of this uh, uh, identity here. So this rho sigma plus y means that you first uh, rescale your hypersurface by factor rho, and then you translate uh, by uh, y, right? So such, uh, then you get uh, this entropy is just, uh, to some geometric invariant under translation and dilation. And second, so if one has a mean curvature flow in Euclidean space, so then this entropy must uh, uh, monotone decreasing under the flow. So this is uh, basically a consequence of Huygens monoticity formula for the flow. And this property is, is the uh, one of the most important property uh, of entropy 
uh, in connection with the flow. Okay. So which makes the quantities very useful in study of the properties of the flow. And thirdly, so there's a, a truly true uh, lower bound on entropy. So namely, so if one consider any hypersurface in Euclidean space, and so take a point on this surface, and we all know that if we dilate it, so then we're going to get a tangent plane to the surface at this point, right? And one can easily compute that. Uh, so in the entropy of this uh, hypersurface, since it's involved taking the supremal over the center and scaling, so it's actually much bigger than equal to this Gaussian surface area evaluated on the uh, hyperplane. So which can be computed explicitly equal to one. Okay. So that's why we have this uh, nice uh, inequality that is also trivially holds for any hypersurface. And the slightly non-trivial fact is that when the equality achieved, so the sigma indeed has to be a hyperplane. So this is uh, due to a result of Le Tianchen, and uh, he has this uh, very nice application of a uh, uh, white's, white's version of bracket local regularity theorem. So to prove this uh, equality holds if and only if that the sigma, it is a hyperplane. And last, at last, so Stone computes uh, the entropy for the spheres. So he gets this very nice monotone relations uh, between entropy of the sphere and the dimension of the sphere. So from these inequalities, you see that entropy is going to uh, monotone uh, decreasing strictly monotone decreasing with the dimension of the sphere. You let the dimension of the sphere going up, then your entropy is actually drop. And in between, so you also see that uh, there's this interesting uh, limiting behavior. So this entropy of the sphere, so it is going to convert to square root two as n tends to infinity. So here we don't specify the center or the radius of the sphere because the first property I showed you. It doesn't matter the center or the, you know, the radius of sphere because they all give you the same number, of, same value of entropy because the entropy is the translation is getting invariant. Okay. Right, so, so next, I would like to just uh, show you an example uh, that demonstrates uh, this interesting relation between entropy and the uh, flow. So let's just consider a curve uh, that in the plane that is closed and smoothly embedded. And so, now, if we try to apply this uh, mean curvature flow to this curve gamma zero, so in this, in this dimension, it's also called a curve shortening flow. Then we get a one parameter family of curves in this plane. And by a classical result of Grayson, so this curve gamma t will remain smooth and become convex before it disappears in finite time. And after it's become convex, then one can apply the gauge Hamilton theorem to show that the blow up of this family of curves at where it disappear looks like self-similarly shrinking round circles in plane. So then what we can get from this process is that First, the binomonoticity and the definition of entropy. So the entropy of the initial curve must be bounded by the entropy uh, 
at a later time, right? So, and when it's, when it's extinct, so we see that the, the round circle will form. So, so by the definition of entropy, you see that the, the entropy of the initial curve has to be at least the entropy of the round circle uh, in plane. Moreover, so if you follow this process closely, then you will see that uh, the equality happens if and only if that this gamma zero itself, it is a round circle. So in this case, you're just going to see this gamma zero evolve some similarly shrinking under the flow to a, a, a point in finite time. And furthermore, so this process also uh, helped provide a nice, natural, smooth isotopy between the initial closed curve gamma zero and the, the round circle. So meaning that you can actually deform in a continuous, smooth, in a smooth way, actually, in a continuous way, actually, to through some uh, smooth closed embedded curve to the round circle. Okay. So this is uh, some uh, nice uh, application of this uh, mean curve flow theory to obtain uh, some sharp lower bound on entropy of a curve in plane. Okay. So it would be natural to wonder whether we can somehow extend this uh, ideas to higher dimensions. So instead of considering a curve in the plane, so one could uh, ask, what about if I consider a closed hypersurface in general dimensional uh, Euclidean space? So of course, you can always start a flow at a closed hypersurface. And the difference between low dimension, the curve case and higher dimension is that in the higher dimensional case, uh, so the flow may actually develop singularities even before it uh, disappears. So the, dif the difference or the difficulty in higher, co -dimension, in higher dimension is that, so the singularity in the flow will be more complicated than the curve case. So nonetheless, one can still use the flow to prove some sharp lower bound for the entropy of closed hypersurface in general dimension. So this is a theorem or other theorem of uh, uh, Jacob and myself uh, for n uh, less than equal to six. And then uh, later on, it's extended to all dimensions by Jonathan Drew. So the theorem says that, so for any n bigger than or equal to two, so consider any closed hypersurface in Euclidean space. Then one get the entropy is uh, bounded from below by the entropy of the round sphere. And the equality holds if and only if that sigma, it is a round sphere. Of course, we can't specify the center or the radius because the entropy is invariant under these uh, motions, right? And this can form a conjecture of a coding human and mini and white. Okay. Right, so I just wanna point out that, uh, so, so this entropy lower bound is strictly bigger than one. So, in contrast to the entropy of a plane. And it, you may, until you may wanna try something like uh, take a sequence of closed hypersurfaces, and then you ask them to convert to some uh, minimal value of this uh, entropy. But the issue is like, uh, you can imagine you may have a sequence of a closed hypersurface that's approach to the hyperplane in some sense, Right, so the hyperplane has the entropy equal to one, but uh, this theorem basically says that the entropy of the closed one, no matter how it's actually close to the hyperplane, it will has entropy strictly bigger than one. So it's not going to follow from that kind of minimizing 
approach. So anyway, so motivated by this theorem, so a natural follow-up question to ask uh, is that, so now suppose you have a closed hypersurface whose entropy is actually very close to this uh, lowest one. So can you actually say some property about this closed hypersurface? So there are many ways to phrase these questions. So I'm going to talk about uh, one perspective, which is this the topological stability question uh, for the wrong sphere and the perturbation of entropy. So indeed, we prove something more in this uh, low dimensions. So first, we show that uh, if sigma it is actually closed surface, whose entropy is less than or equal to the entropy of the cylinder. So then we show that uh, this sigma it is actually smoothly isotopic to the round sphere in uh, R3. So note that so this entropy of round cylinder, it is equal to the entropy of the circle. Hence, it's uh, strictly bigger than the entropy of the round sphere in R3. So not only we prove that uh, small perturbation, we don't change the topology, the isotopic class of the surface, but we also show that there is some gap, uh, actually definitely positive gap, right? So, so, and later on, so we're trying to explore the same type of question in higher uh, dimension. So, one dimensional higher, so consider a closed hypersurface in R4. And now we assume the entropy of the hypersurface it is bound from above by the entropy of this uh, round cylinder. So then we can still prove that uh, sigma, it is uh, smoothly isotopic to the, now the three dimensional round sphere in R4. Okay, so, uh, this is also independently proved by Charles Troy and Mantolidis shows. Uh, both of us actually use mean curvature flow, uh, but uh, in slightly different uh, uh, manners. So uh, Charles Troy and Mantolidis shows method is uh, uh, based on some perturbative argument. So they perturb the surface. So the flow starting at this perturbed one will only develop a nice singularity, namely the cylindrical singularity, whose entropy has been computed explicitly. So then you can use the monoticity to actually uh, prove this theorem, right? So, and, and our strategy is different. So we use the Minkowski flow and we realize that we're going to encounter some uh, asymptotic conical singularities. We're just trying to understand how the topology change along this uh, mean curvature flow when it's crossing this uh, asymptotic sing singularities. So le let me just uh, briefly mention the strategy for the proof. So as I said, so, uh, so I will focus on dimension three because dimension two, so uh, we use different uh, method because there we can classify all the low entropy shrinkers. So then we don't need this more complicated strategy here. So uh, in dimension three, so we first apply the mean curvature flow to the closed hypersurface sigma and assuming that sigma has low entropy, right? So, and so, it's a fortunate that, uh, so in, in the case of mean curvature flow, we have uh, several nice notions of uh, weak solutions. So there's no issue to pass the flow through singularities. So I don't wanna go to the details of that. Uh, so suppose we have a such flow starting at sigma that exists in some suitably weak sense until it disappears in a the point. Then we, 
the key is to analyze the behavior of the flow uh, around singularities. So there are basically two types of singularity we consider. The first type is this intermediate ones. So this happened before the flow disappeared. So, and they are modeled on this asymptotic conical self-shrinking solution to the flow. So, and one can show that uh, by some other work, technical work. So this isotopic class of this time stats remain unchanged when crossing this intermediate uh, singular times. And the other type of singularity is called the terminal singularities. So they are modeled on this closed self-shrinking solution to the flow that are smoothly isotopic to the round sphere. So the last uh, uh, isotopy statement is actually uh, proved by coding human and Minkowski white. So, so with this knowledge or information about the behavior of the flow near singularities, so one can see that with the help of the flow, one can produce a nice isotopy between the initial hypersurface and the standard round sphere. So I should mention that a key ingredient behind this idea, though I don't think I have time to explain, but I just mentioned that the key, the key, a key ingredient is that this coding in causes classification of uh, stable singularities mean curvature flow. So they show that the only stable singularities in the flow are of this uh, cylinder form. So this is, uh, this is something we use uh, uh, in many places uh, in, in explicitly or implicitly. So I think uh, that's more or less I wanna talk and thank you for your attention.